Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is a look at the new CYC Photon Motor, which has just arrived on my doorstep. I'm not going to go through the whole bollocks of opening up boxes and taking things out of wrappings. I will say though that the level of packaging has drastically improved since the days of Gen 1 when everything went in a kind of random cardboard box with bits of foam. So kudos there to CYC because it looks very professional and well done. I'm not going to be installing the motor in this video, that's going to be for Sunday. So if you're not interested in a close look at the components and how they work, feel free to skip this one. This video itself is sponsored by Golden Motor, which is an excellent place to get a CYC Photon, as well as their other motors and pretty much anything else e-bike related. I bought my own motor though here with my own money because I felt that was important because I wanted to present, because I wanted to present a fair and impartial opinion. So we'll start off with the motor core itself. And the first thing to be said is just how small this thing is. It's gonna barely protrude out from underneath the chain ring, um, which is gonna sit on top here. Let me show you that. So there's very little of the motor that's gonna stick out the bottom here, which is gonna be fantastic for uh, for ground clearance. For, uh, for a mid-drive motor, it's very light as well. Um, it's much, much lighter than the BBS HD. Uh, it feels strong, solid and well made. Based on the finish, I think it's cast aluminum that's then been machined afterwards so you can fit on the various different types of components. I do like, I do like the overall look of it. Um, I do still think that the fins here are going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to clean, but I think I can also quite easily make make a tool that's going to let me clean out these fins without then harming harming the finish, and probably without me needing to use lots of water as well to do it. I'm also going to be making something that's going to protect these cables um, coming out from here because if you get damage on these, and they are very thin wires coming through them apart from the battery one. Um, but this one going to the main, going to the main harness, and this one going to the speed sensor. Like if if you damage the wires inside of these, you get all sorts of communication errors. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen. So I'm going to be essentially armoring this whole cluster um, wherever they go into to make sure make sure that possibly can't possibly happen. So the way it's constructed is that you have the core of the motor um, in this part here, and that's the the stator and the rotor. And then you have the gearbox here. And I think as well as the gearbox, um, which I think is a helical style, you also have, I mean, you must have the electronics in this part as well. And then it comes up via a final stage here. And then that comes up to the top here. And then you have the, the free wheel mechanism. And then you also have the mechanism that engages with, with the chain ring at the top here. It's really quite a unique design and I haven't seen one quite like this before. I'm assuming that there is a little gear hidden in this part here, and this must mesh with more teeth that are hidden underneath this casing here. And then you've got the freewheel mechanism in here, which meshes with like teeth and stuff that, that you can't actually see. Um, the chain ring itself meshes with these these splines here around the outside and I'll show uh, I'll show a bit more on the chain ring specifically later. Um, the free wheel mechanism itself, um, if I if I turn this, it makes a very slight ticking noise, which I don't know if the video is going to pick that up or not. Um, but I think this is going to be very very quiet in operation because of that. I'm not really able to show you guys um, much more of the internals because of the way it's been constructed. And it does a little bit call into question the serviceability and the repairability of this motor. It does come with a two year warranty from CYC. So they must be pretty confident about it, but durability as it stands, like it, it is kind of an unknown. If we look at the motor, I don't know if you can see it here. There are four protrusions um, down on the lower part here. And if I had to guess, I'd say that these are bolts and that the the reduction gearbox here and the electronics bolt directly on on top of that um it is a helical gearbox um but there's no way of showing it the plate at the top here it looks 
glued in place. I'm not about to risk damaging like my only motor in an effort to show the internals at this stage. I'm hoping that inside of this, the gearbox has been thoroughly greased, or perhaps there's a way to re-grease it that, that I'm not aware of, but I'll, I'll be asking some questions and I'll let you guys know. Um, if you look here at the outer part here of the, of the housing, it does say, um, 45 to 50 Newton meters of force. And CYC actually supply a tool, um, that fits. This is it here that fits with these little notches. Um, so the fact that there's a tool here suggests that if the clutch was to go bad, you could just remove this entire unit, pull it out and replace it. And I'm presuming as well that the torque sensor is part of this unit as well. Um, so if those parts went bad, presumably you could just take this out and then swap a new one in. Um, I think you should be able to repair your motor um fairly easily and i'm kind of getting the impression this might not be the case so i'm going to check with golden motor and ask them what they think and see if there is you know something in place i mean perhaps there is already a service policy in place with cyc and maybe they're going to be doing it via dealers and that kind of thing um perhaps i just send the motor back it's serviced and it comes back repaired so like I say, the motor, it feels really nicely made. It feels well made and solid. But how repairable it is, I'm not sure. I mean, it might be a complete nothing burger and it might run seamlessly for, you know, five years without needing any sort of regreasing or anything else at all. Um, time will, time will really tell on that. Um, the last thing I kind of noticed with this as well was there's some interesting looking bolt holes here on the back. These are like M3 points on the back of this. And I'm just wondering what they're for, because there seems to be no part that fits with them. Perhaps it was something that was used during the construction of it. Maybe they bolted this down and used that to do, to do the machining around on the front. In terms of how the motor works, it's a little bit different from pretty much anything else that's kind of gone before. Um, the motor core here, we've already looked at. Um, if we look at this, this is a, uh, this is a dual use part. Um, it screws on and it holds the, the chain ring in place. And it also contains a, a bearing that you can turn here. And this is the, the bearing on the right side. And this is what allows the, uh, the spindle here to rotate when you pedal. Uh, this part here is what secures the motor into the bicycle's bottom bracket. Uh, there's also a bearing in this part here. Um, I do notice that this one doesn't rotate anywhere near as smoothly as the one in this part. So I'm hoping that that's, um, that it's not a duff bearing in here and that's just, that's just the way it is. I mean, the good news is that those parts would be very, very easy to replace if needed. Um, this last part here, is the spindle itself and uh, this sits in the bearings on either side and it meshes with the, the free will mechanism with these with these teeth or with these splines here and there are also rubber gaskets here and uh, on this side as well and these help seal against um, against water penetration you can see how it fits here right up to this point um, so this spins around and this is how the spindle rotates. You can also see how it uh, slots through here and engages with the splines. Sorry. And then you've got the free wheel there. And then the other way, if you pedal, you'd be driving the bike forward. While we're talking about this, I um, also want to talk briefly about how the, the grease works because CYC supply some grease with this kit and it's not particularly clear on the instructions where exactly you want to use it and why you're using it and I've seen it get applied in several locations where it's not really actually doing much good so the purpose is to help with um, the rubber seals here um, to keep out any moisture from getting into the core of the unit 
So the instructions say to lubricate the bearings. So you're lubricating um, the bearings here on this and you're lubricating the bearing here on this part as well. Um, so you can do it on the axle itself though. So you want to lubricate around this point where the seal is. You can put a bit on the splines as well um, and you need to lubricate as well around this point here. Um, what it's basically doing is when this turns, uh, it stops moisture getting drawn into the motor as you pedal. And this is really something that you want to do, probably probably replace it every year. And it's very much like you would maintain the bottom bracket on a regular bicycle. So the next thing to have a look at is the, the chain ring itself. And the chain ring fits onto these splines that go around the top here. And there are splines on the chain ring as well that kind of let it lock in to place like so. And uh, the chain ring, it looks to be made out of um, cast, cast aluminum and it's been then machine finished. It has the, uh, it has this, I'll pull it off again. It has the, the narrow wide chain pattern, which is pretty standard these days. And it actually looks like it's a two part construction because there's a torque spec on the outside here and it uses the same tool um, that you can use for, for other parts of the motor. So it looks like the chain guard is one part and then the, the sprocket is it, its other part itself. To attach it, um, you basically lock it down here into the splines. There. And then you take this part here, um, which is uh, the lock ring, if you want to call it. It also has the, uh, the bearing in it itself. And then that basically goes and it spins in here. And that keeps the chain ring locked down. And CYC uh, supply a tool for you to do this. Um, there's also a torque spec on it. Unfortunately, there's no, there's no way of getting um, the torque spec, which is 40 to 50 newton meters, using using this tool i mean i've already talked to my dad and we came up with like some crazy way of kind of like if i put it on and talked it down maybe i could hang a weight off this and, and calculate the weight that i would need to hang off this point here to ensure that it's it's the torque spec um that seems kind of a lot of hassle though so i'm just going to do it as, as tight as i can um and hopefully um it will stay in place and hopefully i don't do any any kind of damage to it but like really what what's the point of putting a torque spec if you've got no way of actually ensuring um the torque spec works i mean I, I can see why they've gone for this method um because once it's all in place it's going to look it's going to look really cool there's going to be no bolts anywhere it's going to give a really nice smooth appearance to the motor but um yeah i, I would have rather like a tool that fitted at the five points with a socket in the middle. So, you know, if they want you to put it on with 40 newton meters of force or whatever, um, you're actually able to put it on with that level of force. Um, so that's kind of the motor and the chain ring and all these other parts here, like the spindle. I'm not going to go into any of the other stuff. Um, it does come with like a huge range of different spaces um, for both um, the bottom bracket and also for putting on um, the crank arms, which are um, pretty nice. It's the Isis spline on this version, um, which is great. Um, there's also a lock ring here. Um, but I'm going to go through those with the actual install because I, I think it's going to make um, a lot more sense um, measuring up these different parts and how I'm going to do that when I actually go uh, and do it with the install. Um, so that's it uh, for this video for today. Uh, hopefully I've kind of explained a little bit about how this all goes together. Although unfortunately I can't really take it apart in any way because I'd have to I'd have to basically bust this plate off and I don't really want to do that on a new motor that I, I want to enjoy and test out and show you guys how the riding takes place. Um, I don't know what this part is. 
so hopefully I can figure that out as well. Uh, but anyway, thank you very, very much to the channel members that support this channel directly. Um, it, it's really appreciated what you guys do. And a huge thanks to everyone else that's been, been watching the video. And I'm going to be getting on with the install and everything tomorrow. So you should get a full install and all those goodies on the Sunday video. So thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you on Sunday. Cheers.